you, Lord Jesus. We praise your name. We worship you. We honor your name. Glory be to your holy name. Lord, we invite your presence. You say to your disciple, you are clean through the words that I have spoken unto you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that let your, work, let your words clean us, that we may be able to walk in the path that you have shown us and to please you in all things. Let your words sanctify us in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for your grace and for your love, for your mercy. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now we're talking about the righteousness in Christ Jesus. The righteousness in Christ Jesus. I'll start reading from Ephesians chapter 2. You know, a lot of people are struggling to live the righteous life in Christ Jesus. They are struggling. They want to do something good so that they can be righteous. It is wrong. You, you, you can never do something good to be righteous. Because your righteousness doesn't depend on your work. It doesn't depend on your works. It's, it's a grace. Now, I'll start reading from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. It says, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Hallelujah. He said, it is by grace, not by works, lest anyone should boast. So it is by grace that we are justified. Now, if you are struggling and trying to, to be righteous or trying to do something to be righteous, you never attain righteousness because righteousness is of faith. Now, so I will, I will explain to you how this works by the grace of the Lord. Explain to you. Um, you know, a lot of people, I'm talking about those who are born again already, a lot of Christians, they think of their life as, you know, just a sinner. We are all sinners. So they pray, God, oh God, please help me. So I'll stop sinning. You see, I told you before, your, your righteousness is not about your work. And God is not looking at your work to call you righteous. If we go back to the beginning, how all the world is called or has become under the power of sin. The world is subject to sin because one man sin, and when one man sin, we all have the nature of sin because of the sin of one man. So you did not have to do anything wrong to be called a sinner because sin is a nature. See, sin is imparted to your spirit or to your nature because the first man, Adam, sinned. So you are called sinner because somebody sin and you have by inheritance you have that sin by inheritance you know through the blood now the same way now the, the you know the the act of sin or the sin that you commit is a result of your nature of sin see so god doesn't look at your your act of sin first to call you a sinner he looks at your your nature of sin now the same way you did not do anything wrong to be called a sinner, just like a baby in the womb of her mother. He's a sinner. When God looks at that baby, God calls him a sinner because of the nature of sinner. But the baby didn't, didn't do anything wrong. So the same way you, you don't have to do anything wrong to be called a sinner is the same way you don't have to do anything right to be called righteous because of the righteousness of somebody. You are called sinner because of the sin of somebody, the nature of sin of somebody. The same way you are called righteous because of the nature of the, the, the nature of somebody, the nature of righteousness of Jesus Christ. So if you are in Christ Jesus, you have by inheritance the nature of righteousness. If you read uh, Romans chapter 3, I'll start reading. We are going to read uh, a lot of scriptures here just to, to explain things. So if you don't have your Bible, you can go get it now. Now, I'm reading from um, verse 23, Romans chapter 3, verse 23. It says, For all have sinned 
and fall short of the glory of God. It's amazing, but a lot of people just stop there. They say, for all have sinned and have fall short of the glory of God. You know, they, they stop there. So they call themselves, everybody have sinned. And uh, we, you know, we fell short of the glory of God. But if we read on, then we can see Paul is talking about something and he is going to somewhere. Now, let's, let's read again from verse 23, Romans chapter 3. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely. See, already, he said, being justified freely. They have all sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God, but they are all justified freely. That means they have been declared righteous freely by the grace, by his grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness. You see, God wants to show you his righteousness. Verse 26, to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of the one who believes in Jesus Christ. Or the one who has faith in Jesus. See, God is just and is the justifier of everybody who believes in Jesus Christ. So once you believe in Jesus Christ, you have the nature of righteousness. That gives you, you know, that gives you the, the, the right standing. So everything you, you do or everywhere you are, you are the righteousness. You are the manifestation of the righteousness of God. That's why in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, he, he told us that him who did not sin, God made him to be sin for us. He's talking about Jesus. So that we might be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So we are that righteousness of God. So it gives you confidence that everything you do, everywhere you go, you are the righteousness. So you can no longer be called sinner because he told us that God forbear and forgot our sin that were previously committed. And now in his righteousness, we are, we are living under the grace. See, so sin is no longer counted against you. Maybe I should read that 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. Silent the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now, the word of reconciliation is what I'm doing here. I'm telling you, God is not mad at you, and God is not counting your sin against you if you are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because of the price that he paid. He paid the price of sin. Now, you may tell me, so does that mean we can continue to sin? No. Why? Because when he gave you the nature of righteousness, he expects you to live that life of righteousness. Romans chapter 5 verse, from verse 1, he, tell us, he tells us, Romans chapter 5 verse 1, he said, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. You see, so we are at peace with God because we have been justified by faith. Because you are justified by faith, you have the nature of God, the, 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 the nature of righteousness. Now that nature of righteousness allows you to live without sin. You say how? You say, I'll read to you. Romans chapter 6, verse 11. He said, likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. He's telling you to reckon yourself. He said to look at yourself like dead to sin. See, you are dead to sin. In verse 14, he tells us that for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under the grace. Then you say, so if we are under the law, but, uh, uh, we are not under the law, but under grace, so does it mean we can sin because we are under grace? He says, no, because you are dead with Christ. See, when Jesus Christ died, you died in him. The Bible says he died for sin, and now he rose to live for God. Now you died, in, you died because of sin. And when Jesus was raised, to, uh, was raised back to life, you also came back to life with a new nature. That's why the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. You are a new creation with a new nature, the nature of righteousness. 
So it does not depend on your work. That's that's really the point. That's really where I, I want to, to focus on. It does not depend on your work. See, just because you have done something wrong doesn't mean you are no longer the righteousness of God. You're probably learning, so learn it quick and live the righteous life of God. If you are looking for your works to be justified, then you can never make it. That's why they, they had the law before, but they can never fulfill the law. You see, but it is by grace. You know, Isaiah said, their righteousness is, for, is from me, saith the Lord. You see, their righteousness is from me or is of me. So our righteousness is of God. I'll read that to you in a moment. Our righteousness is of God. So that gives you confidence. And you know, righteousness is not only a nature, but it's also a power. You know, it's a power of God. It's a power of God. Hallelujah. It's a power of God. I would like to read something to you real quick here. Romans chapter 1. We, we're going to stick a little bit in Romans here. Romans chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 16. Now, Paul is writing here and he said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power, look, say it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Now, verse 17. He said, For in, in that, in the gospel of Jesus Christ, he said, For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. See, he's telling you the righteousness of God is, is wrapped up in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Once you receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, as far as God is concerned, you are righteous. You say, how oh, but I sin all the time. I do some stupid thing. Yes, he's not counting those things against you, expecting you expecting you to change because of the righteousness of God. See, God does not look at you. Before God looks at you, he looks at you through Jesus. So he's not looking at your own righteousness. He's looking at the righteousness of Jesus Christ because Jesus died at your place. And I say it is a power too. It means you are righteous. I mean, you are righteous. You know, a lot of troubles, a lot of things in the world sickness and things they they came into the world because of sin not necessarily the sin that you have committed but because of the you know sin in general from the the, the first man adam that's where sickness come from that's where you know war and uh, envy and uh, adultery you know everything everything and the, the the things that people are going through in life you know the hardship it is because of sin because the whole creation is subject to sin or was subject to sin see so now, if you are or have this nature of righteousness, it means sin has no longer power over you. It means the things that are caused by the devil can no longer affect you. See, the devil is called the accuser. And you can do something and the devil will go to accuse you before God. He can no longer do that. Why? Because of the nature of righteousness. So if, if the devil somehow will accuse you before God, God will still declare you righteous. Why? Because of the righteousness that he gave you in Christ Jesus. So he's not looking at you, but he's looking at Jesus. And Abraham had the revelation of that. And he got it. He got it. And he, the, that righteousness made him a master. That something else righteousness will do for you. He, he make the, uh, 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 the righteousness, it makes you a master. Master over situations, master over circumstances, master over sickness, master over, you know, trouble and hardship. Righteousness makes you master. Why? Because God is righteous. And when God said, you know, remember the book of Genesis, when God said, let there be light, there was light. Why? Because of the righteousness. It is the power of God. He, he can only be righteous. It means when he says something, it has to be that way. That's who you become when you receive Jesus Christ and you are declared righteous. Especially when you know about the righteousness that you have in Christ Jesus. You have that power. Everything that you declare must be as you have said. See, I'll show it to you now. Let's see what Abraham, you know, Abraham received. Our father in faith. We we'll read from Romans chapter 4. Now we we'll read from verse 1. Romans chapter 4 verse 1. He said, 
What then shall we say that Abraham, our father, has found according to the flesh? Say, for if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about. Say, if Abraham was justified by his own work, if Abraham did something for God to justify him, then he can boast. He can say, you know what? I did this. That's why God justified me. Verse 2, he says, For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Watch now. Say, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. If he was justified by works, he should boast. He have something to boast about. But he did not do anything. He said, the scriptures say Abraham believed in God. Now this is, this is so powerful and you need to focus the, here. See, Abraham believed in God and it was counted or accounted for him for righteousness. He said, now to him who works, the wages are, that's verse 4. To him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debts. Now, what it means is, he's telling you, if you work for something, it's no longer a grace. It's, it's a, a debt. It's a payment. You deserve it if you work for it. Now, verse 5. He said, but to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counting for righteousness. He said, if you work for it, then it's no longer grace. It's your rights. It's your payment. But if you did not do anything for it, but you believe in the God who justifies the ungodly, he said, that faith, that belief is counted for you for righteousness. I don't know if you're getting this. Let me say it again. If you didn't do anything, but believe only in God to justify you, then your faith is counted for you for righteousness. That means God looks at your faith and declares you righteous. You know, that's why people are struggling. They want to do something to be righteous. You know, say if Abraham did that, he should have something to boast about. That's what people are trying to do. They are trying to do something to please God. It's okay to work in the, in, in, you know, to do good things. But I want you to know, you are not justified thereby. You are not justified because of that. Abraham knew that and he believed in God and that belief, that faith was counted for him as righteousness. Now, verse 16, let's jump over verse 16. He said, therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise might be sure to all seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of, of Abraham, who is the father of us all. See, he said, not only of those who are of the law. So you may tell me, do you, do you mean or does he mean those who are of the law are justified by the law also? No, because in verse 12, he told us, and the father of circumcision to those who not only are of the circumcision, which means not only are of the law, but who also walk in the step of the faith. It means even if you fulfill the whole law of Moses, if you don't have faith, you are not justified. Because the Bible says, by the deed of the law, no man shall be justified. See, by the deed of the law, no man shall be justified. So you can do everything you want. You cannot be justified by that because indeed you can never fulfill the law. Only Jesus did that. Now, verse 16. Uh, we just read verse 16, but I'll read it again. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Now, if you believe of the righteousness, I told you it's a power and it's a right standing for you to be right. It means you can, you can, you can have, you know, like you, when you go to pray, some people go to pray in, um, in shame and in fear. See, the Bible says, where there is love, there is no longer fear. And God loves us so much that the, the fear of God is, is not to be afraid of him like he's going to kill you or he's not going to respond to you or something. The fear of God is, uh, is an attitude of respect to him. So you are not trembling before God because of your sin. Now, because of righteousness, of course. Now, this faith is important that you keep it the way Abraham kept it. So I'll read it to you now, verse 20. He said, he did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief. But he was strengthened 
in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he has promised, he was also able to perform, and therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. See, so Abraham believed, we read, Abraham believed in God who justifies the ungodly. He did not depend on his works. He believed in God. And also, the Bible says he did not waver at the promise of God, but he was strong in faith. And he believed that what God has said, he can do it. So when God said, I will justify you in Christ Jesus, you have to believe that what he says, he can do it. He said, I will justify you in Christ Jesus, not because of your works, but because of what Jesus did. Not because of what you have done, but because of what Jesus did. That's how Abraham believed. He, he did not shake him. He was strengthened in faith, believing in God. Now, this is powerful here. Verse 23. He said, now, it was not written for his sake alone. He's talking about Abraham. It was, now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. But also for us, it shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered because who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. That scripture just read you that Abraham believed in God and it was imputed to him for righteousness. The Bible says it was not written for his sake alone, but also for us who will believe in Jesus Christ. It shall be imputed to us for righteousness. Why? Because we believe in Jesus Christ. You see, righteousness is so simple. And this is what made Abraham a master. This is what made him a father of many of many nations as the promise were. You see, God promised, he believed it, and he became a master all his life. Now, if you too, you believe in that righteousness, you know you're going to work and you know your, your qualification, your promotion doesn't depend on, you know, what you are doing. Of course, you got to do a good job at work. But you see, your qualification, the Bible says promotion doesn't come from the east or from the west. Promotion comes from the Lord. So it's not about what you are doing. You have to do a good work because you are a child of God. But you see, people have done it so much, they can't get promoted. Your promotion and your, your fulfillment is because of the righteousness of God. It's God who declares you righteous. He declares you righteous. See, that made you, uh, that, 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 that made you a master of everything you do. You know, when you go out, you come back because of righteousness. Everything that is falling at the left hand or at the right hand, it cannot get close to you. That's what the, 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 the Psalm 91, 91 uh, told us. You see, thousands shall fall at your, your, your left hand, ten thousand at your right hand. It shall not come near you. Why? Because of righteousness. Now, let's read a couple more scripture here. I'm about to finish. I'm reading now uh, Romans chapter 10. Let's read from verse 8. Now, uh, let me go back to, I, I'll, I'll read from verse 5. He said, For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. For you, those people who think they are justified because they are living right, you are deceiving yourself. God cannot justify you that way because you can't live right 100%. You can never do it. So forget about that. I will tell you why you have to live, live righteously. I will tell you in a moment. But you are not justified because of that. Now, let's read verse 5. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law, which is of works. He said, the man who does those things shall live by them. Say, that's the righteousness of the law. If you do it, you will live by that. Now, verse 6. He said, but the righteousness of faith speak in this way. He said, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who will ascend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. So he said, but what does it say? What does the righteousness of faith say? How does it work? It's going to tell you the righteousness of faith. How does it work? Verse 8. He said the word. It means the word of righteousness. The word that is going to make you righteous before God. He said the word is near you. You may be thinking, what is the word? How, how can I get righteous with God? I'm just going to show you now. He said the word is near you. In your mouth and in your hearts. That means so close. 
It's near you. He said, the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. He said, that is the word of faith that we preach. That is the word I'm telling you now. The word of faith that we preach. And what is that word of faith? That word of faith is verse 9. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. He said, Verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised you from the dead, you will be saved. Now watch verse 10. He says, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness. You see, that's the secret. He said, if you confess the Lord Jesus Christ with your mouth and believe in your heart. Now he's telling you, with your heart you are believed and you are made righteous with the heart men believe unto righteousness. So once you believe, he said the word is in you. Once you believe in that words that Jesus is raised from the dead for my justification. That's what Romans uh, 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 4 that we read earlier told us. I'll read one more time for you. Romans 4, I'm reading the last verse here. Verse 25, he said, who, he's talking about Jesus, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. Now go back quick here to Romans chapter 10. Here he's telling you Jesus was crucified, you know, for our sin and uh, was raised back. Uh, he was condemned because of our sin and was raised back because of for our justification. That's what he's telling you here. If you believe in your heart that Jesus died for you and was raised, to get, was raised up, you are justified. That's how God justifies you. Pretty simple. So now it's on your side. Will you choose to believe or will you be struggling so that God will make you righteous? I choose to believe. That's, that's why Abraham chose. He said Abraham chose to believe in the God who justifies the ungodly. You were ungodly. You did not know God. Once, just one day, maybe when you are watching and you made up your mind that I will believe in Jesus Christ, the by the time you made up your mind in your heart that I believe in Jesus because he died for me and was raised up, the Bible says in your heart already you are justified. Now, when you declare that with your mouth, then you are saved. It means you are born again. Hallelujah. So that's how righteousness works. And I say, I will tell you why you have to live righteous. One more time. You are declared righteous not because you are living righteous. God declares you righteous once you are in Jesus Christ. But you have the responsibility to live righteous. Why? Because, because of the nature that you have. Now you have the nature of righteousness. And it gives you right standing. It gives you power. He say, ask and I will give you. It gives you power. So where would you live you know, wrongly? Where would you steal? Where would you commit adultery? Where would you do stupid things? You already have the righteousness of God. So you have this responsibility to live according to your new man. Say you have become a new man. He said, put off the old man that is uh, 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 corrupted. And to put on the new man that is created in true holiness and righteousness. Ephesians 4 chapter 24. You see. So you put on that new man and you live righteously. You live righteously. Now, before we get done here, let's read something. I told you Isaiah talked about it and said their righteousness is of me. Now, I'll finish with that one. Isaiah chapter 54. That's, that's a, a, a demonstration of righteousness here. I mean, you can read the whole, the whole chapter. It's, uh, it's, it's amazing. It will, it, will, it will help you. The whole chapter 20, uh, 54. Isaiah 54. Then you can see what are the promises and the, the, the grace, the things that you receive because of the righteousness of God. But I'm just, I'm just going to read verse 17. He said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Then he said, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. He said, their righteousness is from me. Now let me read over and explain to you. He said, no weapon formed against you. It means if somebody is thinking evil against you, somebody is thinking to destroy your life, or even, even the things of this, this life, like I mentioned, sickness and trouble, if, they are, if something somehow is against your life, he's telling you it's a weapon, but that weapon fashioned against you cannot prosper. It, it cannot prosper. He's telling you it can't prosper. Why? Because of your 
righteousness. He said, your righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Your righteousness is from me. Your righteousness is of God, is from God. Therefore, nothing in this world can affect you. And he said, every tongue that, raised, that rises against you in judgment, you shall come. However, they will try to accuse you. He's telling you, you will condemn them. Why? Because you are righteous. You are declared righteous. Romans 5.1. He said, being declared righteous, we have peace with God. So, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Every tongue that raised against you, every judgment, every, things, every curse that, that will rise against you, you, are, you will condemn them. This is the righteousness of God. This is how you know you have confidence in life. You know you can never fail. You know you can never be at the bottom of the line. Uh, 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 the bottom of the line. Because of righteousness. You pray and you are thinking, oh God, you have declared me righteous. You have declared me righteous. I'm just going to believe in your righteousness and walk in your righteousness. Like John cries out and said, he said, you are of God, the little children, and you have overcome them because the one living in you is greater than the one that is in the world. You see, that's your righteousness. That's the spirit of God living in you. So you pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm righteous. Because Jesus, Jesus declared me righteous. Jesus had made me righteous. So my righteousness of God, I cannot fail. I cannot go down. I cannot be lost. You know, I can't even get sick. If there is sickness in my body, it shall be healed. Because the Lord has declared me righteous and has healed me from all my sickness. The trouble I'm going through now is just a process of time. The Bible says the things that we can see, they are all subject to change. So you pray that way. You say in the name of Jesus. That's one way to use the righteousness by using the name of Jesus. You say, in the name of Jesus, I'm coming out of this thing. I'm coming out in Jesus' name. Glory. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you. We praise you. We glorify your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the life of somebody. Somebody has understood his righteousness and is standing on his righteousness to make impacts. To make impacts. He said, when you pray, say, let your kingdom come. Because of righteousness, the kingdom of God will come through us to the world that they may know and see that Jesus Christ is Lord. The Bible says, every knee should bow at the mention of the name of the Lord Jesus and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So in your life, every situation must confess that Jesus Jesus Christ is law. Every situation must buy down because you have been declared righteous. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Pray a moment. Pray a moment. Pray a moment now and declare this word. Declare this word. Who you are in Christ Jesus. The righteousness of God. The righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Keep on praying. Keep on praying in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.